Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 235 doing an October speculation and investment video. We've got a lot of exciting things happening right now in Magic Finance. And just as a reminder, if you want early access to these slides, become a patron of the channel and you'll get to see them as I construct them uh, live. I usually give people about a day or so access to them before I put together the videos. We've got a lot of interesting stuff going on right now. Anytime there's a pro tour or a major event, it causes waves throughout all of Magic Finance. And the recent pro tour is no exception to that. We see something here that we've never seen before. The battle between a blue planeswalker and a four casting cost creature. Oh, wait, maybe we have seen this before. We're back on Zendikar and being back on Zendikar means that Jace is running Supreme and Siege Rhino is a powerhouse. Although Siege Rhino is worth about $4 at this point and ready to crash as it rotates out, well, Jace has just reached $80. The biggest question I've gotten recently is, what should I do with Jace? Buy, sell, trade, liquidate? My answers are across the board. The standard Jaces from Magic Origins I would sell them at their $80 high. A Mythic in standard is likely to go way down when it rotates out. Although we've still got about two months uh, of high before that necessarily happens. Jace though is playable in eternal formats. So if he crashes, he will come back up. Had an interesting comment on the channel that pointed out, we are very unlikely to see Jace in an upcoming dual pack. Most of the Planeswalkers that have been in the dual packs have been from non-core sets, if not all of them. There was thoughts that we may see Gideon before we see Jace. I don't have any confirmation on either of those. This is just speculation. I'm guessing that we will not see a Jace reprint anytime soon, and that we are more likely to see a Gideon uh, reprint. It looks a little bit odd here, but I've got other versions of Jace here that I'm definitely telling people to buy. The pre-release version I saw as low as $100 while I was working on this video. It was $107 yesterday at Card Kingdom. I think they're back up to $120 uh, as I'm recording this right now. The pre-release versions are foil. They're beautiful. I would definitely trade for them when they're anywhere near the price of the standard. The Pack foils are running about 130 to 150. I would hold on to those. The version though that I would definitely try to pick up is the San Diego Comic Con version. Um, I'll have some better pictures of this soon. I just finished doing a pack opening and I am uh, editing that currently of the San Diego Comic Con Planeswalkers. They are just beautiful, stunning, long term. This is the version people are going to want. For Vintage, yes, Jace is playable in Vintage. For Legacy, you see in Plan Shardless Bug. And for Modern, where I expect to see a lot of him in the near future. Gideon, on the other hand, I mentioned, even if we don't see a reprint, $40 for a White Mythic is a hell of a lot, especially for one that hasn't made waves at all in Eternal formats. I like the emblem on Gideon a lot. It basically says, I get a crusade that can't be disenchanted for four mana, but that doesn't make him playable eternally. He's a powerhouse in standard and could easily see a reprint in a dual deck. I would sell him right now while he's hot. Other cards that you've got a very small window of opportunity to sell are Mantis Rider, Anafenza, Wingmate Rock, and Bloodsoaked Champion. This set was heavily, heavily opened. All of these cards just spiked from where they were two weeks ago. They all should be liquidated currently before you have $2 rares, or even in the case of Mantis Rider, quarter rares. Mantis Rider is unfortunately not playable in Eternal formats. It's not going to see much play in EDH. You've got to get rid of it now. By contrast, you should be looking at the Eternal cards that have just bottomed out recently. Glenendra Archmage, I'm still putting on the buy list. She started to go up. Ulamog is down to $15. True Name is an Eternal powerhouse for Legacy. Nice commander card overall. $15 is a great deal on him. And Elish Norn is down to $12. 
that is a casual favorite that also goes in reanimator decks. Great card to pick up right now. Ulamog from the current set is down to ten to fifteen dollars online. This is an Eldrazi that people are going to love in the casual market for years to come. Very easy to trade for currently. Only seeing a little bit of brew play, not a lot of competitive play yet. Although the right ramp deck, and there is one ramp deck out there that I've seen that I really like, could shoot this through the roof short term too. I would pick them up at this $10 to $13 range, no problem. Crucible of Worlds is another that people have been asking me about, and I don't see a reprint anywhere in the future for it. It just keeps going up. I would pick up your Crucibles now if you don't have them. Long-term, great card to have. Holigan's Command, $12 is a deal on this card. Not only is it really strong in standard, huge open set, but eternally, you want to look at the foreigns, the foils, the pre-releases. I've been seeing these that are out the $20 to $50 range, and they could easily double in the next year if this makes a good showing in Modern or in Legacy and the upcoming GPs. Commons are one of my absolute favorite things to invest in. They're so inexpensive to get into, and when they go up, they often double or triple in price. Taking something that you paid a quarter or a dollar for, like a Taxian Probe, and now it's a $3 card. Vapor Snag was just reprinted, and it's very good against Delve cards overall. Curd Ape continues to climb as a classic, playable common in cubes that dates back to Arabian Nights. And Gurmog Angler is definitely my favorite card right now for foil commons. You can usually find them at about the $5 to $10 range. It's playable in Legacy because of Caracas. They should be $15, $20 cards, no problem, as Caracas sees more play. I just did a whole video on the Snapcaster Mage reprint. Check that out if you want to know more. But my recommendations are... Buy the basic ones right now. They're down around 50, 55. Look for the new ones next year at about the $100 range. And the foils, I've seen people liquidating them at 150 because they're scared of this reprint. Long term, the pack foils have a lot of growth to them as he sees more play. If you missed your chance to get fetches, the train has left. Fetches are increasing almost on a daily basis. Almost all of these are over $20. I wouldn't be surprised to see polluted up around $30 or $40, along with flooded when we get to the next modern season. When should you liquidate these? I'm giving it probably about a year to hold on to them until we start to hear talk of another reprint or we're at the high point in a modern season. I do not believe that we will see these five reprinted anytime soon, and the value is just going up on them. A lot of people think that they'll crash when they rotate out of standard because standard is a giant format. Modern is growing as fast, if not faster, than standard, and just as these rotate out, we're going to be entering a modern season where people are going to want them. Now, by comparison, the shocks have not shot up. And I get that question occasionally, how long should I hold on to cards for speculation or investment? The shocks I've actually held on to a lot longer than I had ever intended to. And Wizards has done something really weird here in that by reprinting the fetches, it's kept down the value of the shock significantly. Fetches are a four of in most decks where shocks are a one to three of. So you've got this weird situation where everybody would rather put their money into fetches. As fetches shoot through the roof, shocks will eventually follow them. They're not going to get anywhere near as high as fetches, but if you don't have your play sets, you've still got a chance to get your play sets. I wouldn't invest much more heavily, though, than two to three play sets with the intent of trading those out a little bit later because they're not needed as a four of, and they were heavily, heavily opened. The last land that I'm going to talk about here is one that I've talked about several times. The Scars Fast Lands are incredible. Not taking damage from your land in a format where many of the decks have a three casting cost or lower curve is super powerful. 
I wouldn't be surprised to maybe even see these as part of the next group of expeditions. These are great cards. They're underplayed in modern, very, very powerful, and very, very reasonable. They also look beautiful in foil. Definitely pick up the foils for these if you can. Expeditions. I'm still avoiding the tangos altogether. I haven't seen any of them played in modern yet. Long term, I think they have very little value. In Legacy, though, we've seen something really interesting with Retreat to Coral Helm. Top 8 at the last SCG, and we had one go undefeated at the Card Kingdom Legacy on Monday that I was doing commentary for. I wish I could have got it on camera. Unfortunately, they drew out the last round. This combo, though, gives a fair deck, which is Maverick, a combo out to win. Very, very nice. This is something that Maverick really hasn't had in the past unless they were playing some type of natural order combo. And the problem with the natural order combo is you get two for one if they countered it. Very, very painful to see your knight or your mana dork go away with your natural order. Retreat to Coral Helm is a lower casting cost combo that's extremely powerful. The combo is also very resilient as you can get a Sajiri step in your deck to protect the knight, stopping things like Abrupt Decay. Back to the expeditions. The blue fetch lands are wonderful. They're beautiful. I am suggesting that people buy them, just not yet. We've got about 30 days, maybe even only three weeks, of Battle for Zendikar still being opened very heavily, and these being traded off by individuals who open them up in drafts. Probably 30 to 60 days from now is the time to start investing in these play sets. Four or five months from now, you'll be happy that you picked them up. If you decide to start trading for them now, I completely understand. You don't want to miss the window when these are at their low point and they've dropped at least $200 from their announced price already. There's not a lot more room for them to drop. They're still on the decline, but not for long. Any time in the next 60 days or so is when I would strongly suggest starting to jump in and trade for these. I've got a few other recommended buys here. Ugin is on his way up. Very, very powerful card. Eternal and casual playable. By this time next year, I expect to see it at a $50 card. Monastery Mentor has also started to increase in price. Legacy, eternal, playable card. The foils are already up over $50. The non-foils, though, are also seeing some movement. EDH, the card is very, very powerful. Tassiger is down to $4. Just reprinted in an event deck. This is the lowest you're going to see Tassiger for several years. Tassiger could easily be triple to quadruple in a year. Great card for both Modern and Legacy, even though Caracas does cause it some serious issues. I even like Tassiger in Vintage, where I'm playing him as a one-of. Now, Liliana, the San Diego Comic-Con version I've got in here, as a little bit of a high-risk choice, Lily is starting to see play in Standard and could easily spike to double if she's playable in Standard. Additionally, I've seen some interesting brews in Modern that really haven't broken into your top eights yet. One of those breaks through and she'll double or triple in price overnight. If you can pick up Lilies off of individuals who've just picked up the whole set of the Planeswalkers to get the chase, you could be very happy with Lily six months to 12 months from now. Eureka jumped through the roof. It looks like it was a buyout. Every site went out pretty much overnight, and then it came back on TCG Player at $240, where it had been $130 the night before. Why is this happening? No clue whatsoever. There is no deck right now that uses Eureka. As long as Natural Order and Show and Tell are legal in Legacy, Eureka is not playable in Legacy. If Show and Tell gets banned, then there's probably a crazy Eureka deck out there. The supply on this card, though, is so small that it probably won't come back down. It's probably a $200 card from now on. It's just not as liquid 
as many of your other legend cards. This is not a tabernacle. This is not a moat. Moat sees a significant amount of sideboard play or even play in Enchantress, which has been top aiding recently. Another thing that I want to talk about here is buy list prices and the current state of Tarmogoyf. I've seen several Goyfs for sale on a local site, Magic the Seattling, on Facebook, that have been going for about $200 now for the foil and $120 for the non-foil from Modern Masters. The buy list on these is really low right now. My guess is the big stores all have a glut of them. This is the buy list prices from Star City Games, and $80 on Tarmogoyf is a little bit painful for a buy list price of a card that a lot of people think is a $200 card. The reality, though, is that Tarmogoyf right now is really only about a $225 card to a $200 card in foil from the most recent Modern Masters. There's a lot of people who would rather have Expedition Lands or Standard Jaces. We see this really interesting off-season thing where the Pro Tour isn't modern currently. People aren't grinding modern every week. So modern cards have gone down significantly, and Jace is taking one of the biggest hits. I would recommend jumping into Tarmogoyfs here in the next 30 days, because this low is not likely to keep once we get back to modern season. Learning how this ebb and flow of cards go, and to look at trades as what is something going to be worth in six months, is an important part of Magic Finance. Buy list prices give you a pretty accurate reflection of what's going on right now. So look at your buy list prices very seriously, and also kind of your casual offers to sell. I've got a lot of videos coming out, hopefully in the next week or so. I've got more videos than I can actually produce at this point. I've got one on improving at MTG, doing my patron pack openings for the month. So I've got an interview with Haile Santo, who does great content for Gathering Magic. I've got one on transformative sideboards, a new EDH list. The Professor just put out a deck tech that I put together, and I need to do promotion for that in the next few days. Um, and I did commentary over at Mox Boarding House for their Twitch channel for Card Kingdom on Monday. I'm going to chop up some of those videos and get them up. Uh, I kind of need an extra 40 hours a week to finish up these videos, but I've got a lot of stuff that's in production. Hopefully you'll see most of it in the next week and a half, two weeks here. Please take a moment and bite into that subscribe button and become a subscriber of the channel. Thank you to everybody who supports the channel on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. You make this channel possible. I'm going to be out at the Seattle GP Legacy here very soon in a week and a half. If you're there, please hit me up, say hi. Hopefully we can even get a game between rounds. Or if I lose in the Legacy event, I'll have a lot of time to trade. Or play Vintage. They've got three Vintage events going on.